Little Ricky here is one of the 150,000 workers in Guiyu, China, tasked with the disassembly of the mountain's electronic waste in horrendous working conditions, consisting of the many computers, cell phones, electronic devices, entertainment systems, TVs, mobile phones, that we as first world nations simply throw away, regardless of working condition. The rapid advancement in technology in today's society causes electronics to become outdated even before they left the assembly line. The result is the 50 million tons of e-waste produced each year, where only 15%, 15 to 20% is recycled, 30% is still brand new, and is expected to increase by over 500% over the next decade. We simply export all our e-waste to these third world nations where labor is cheap and safety conditions are non-existent. Ricky, do you know what this sign says? I don't know. I can't read. It says safe work environment. Do you know what a safe work environment is, Ricky? What's the safety? Exactly. This is the sad reality for many of the e-waste workers here in Guiyu, China, as well as many third world countries around the world. The working conditions are poor, and the likelihood of becoming too sick to work by age 35 or 40 is very likely. Many of these people are illiterate and do not even realize the hazardous materials they're working with. Yet, they continue to flock here in, in, in hopes of finding work to support their families. Each year, Guiyu alone processes over 1.5 million tons of e-waste, generating about $75 million worth of revenue for the industry. It's funny though, China has banned the import of electronic waste, yet their industry demands for these raw materials, so the ban is ignored. On top of that, the EPA has no certification for e-waste recyclers, so basically any broker or any company can say it recycles the waste, even though it's just exporting to these third world countries for disassembly. So how do you go about recycling all this electronic waste, Ricky? For motherboards like this, I simply put it into the pot and melt away all the solder. Afterwards, I remove the chips by hand. And what about other electronics? Well, we throw it into an open fire to burn away the plastic so we can get to the valuable metals. What do you do with all this refuse? We dump it in the river. It's processes like these that release carcinogens and neurotoxins into the air, leaving a thick acrid smog hanging over the villages. The fumes contain dioxins and furans and contribute to the neurological, respiratory, digestive and skin disease 88% of the e-workers suffer from, as well as 80% of the children containing high levels of lead in their bloodstreams. Time for supper! It has all the necessary vitamins and minerals! Yay! I found a hard drive! I'm going to be someone I'm not for the day! As we can see, identity theft is yet another problem that comes from e-waste, as the workers do not care about your confidentiality and will gladly sell your personal information to support their families. An international investigation team on dumping e-waste collected several hard drives shipped to Ghana and discovered defense and security contracts involving the DIA, NASA, and Homeland Security on one hard drive. From their anal analysis, they established a link between the large amount of internet fraud coming from Ghana and the dumping of e-waste. And there we have it. E-waste. It's a huge problem. What are we going to do about it? We have to fix this. Here's a non-threatening white guy with the solution. Hi, I'm a non-threatening white guy. And I'm Alan. And we'd like to talk to you about the solutions to e-waste. You see, you're living your life wrong, and we're here to tell you why. While it may seem hopeless to fight the rising mountains of e-waste, there is a solution. The solution is both here and abroad. You see, it's possible to safely destroy and recycle these useless computer parts and make a profit. Companies like Geep have devised a method to disassemble the parts into their core components with absolute safety to the workers. They also turn a profit. Yes, it would seem petroleum companies pay quite nicely for diesel grade lead. Now that's smart business. Keyboards! Game consoles! Speakers! 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 We want it! Will you take my old phone? You know I will because it's electronic! Woo! Give it to us! We'll take them free! It's easy! Just put them out on garbage day! We pick up, you don't pay! We want it! We recycle them safely, no questions asked! We don't want to know your business! We want it! Are you recycling electronics? I do, because I am the city of Toronto! We want it! 
Let's not forget to mention that factories will not employ children as their main labor force. As time goes on, hopefully more of these businesses will start to spring up, especially in places like Guiyu and Ghana, where most of the waste tends to collect. Also, these businesses will provide jobs for thousands of people whose main source of income stems from e-waste recycling. Not to mention, they'll live longer. It's important to note that our hard drives and other media storage centers will be disposed of safely and securely. As we said before, not all e-waste is useless. 15% is still brand new, and some of these components are already finding their way out of the waste bin and into our schools. Yes, with programs like Computers for Schools, the companies donate their out-of-date electronics to various schools all over the world. This not only reduces the amount of waste being shipped overseas, but also creates a productive learning environment for school-aged children. Now that's something we can all get behind. In addition, there are company-specific programs which allow the consumer to return their used products at no extra charge. While it all may seem out of your hands, there are several things you can do at home in order to reduce e-waste and its effects. For example, when you're done with your hard drive, scanner, printer, and other media storage devices, you can wipe the memory clean. This can be accomplished by reformatting the storage device or simply passing a magnet over it. Also, companies such as Sony are currently telling their customers to drop off their used products at designated collection sites. This promotes e-waste recycling. To find these collection sites and which companies are offering collection services, simply check the company website before disposing of your electronic goods. Also, before getting rid of any useful computer parts, ask your friends or neighbors if they can find any other use for them. Many people build and upgrade their current machine with donated or used parts. As we all know, e-waste is a big problem, but it doesn't have to be, thanks to some of the solutions we've highlighted. And remember, just think before you throw out that battery. You might even save little Ricky's life. I'm a non-threatening white guy. And I'm Alan. And this was E-Waste. Yeah! Avenue and then